What is going on guys, you're watching Dev Dreamer and welcome to lesson 31 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to be learning all about array iterator methods. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 31. In the previous lesson, we learned all about array methods. In this lesson, we're going to be covering more array methods, but these are specifically array iterator methods. Now, what's the difference? Well, array iterator methods are used to actually iterate, or we can say loop over our array values and perform some sort of an action on each of those values. Now, there are eight of these in total. Let's start with the first one, which is for each. So first then we need an array. So we're just gonna go ahead and paste this in. Okay, we're gonna be using the same array from the previous lesson. And down here, I'm going to say supers dot for each. Now, the way that this works is inside the parentheses here, we need to supply a function. And again, we will be looking at functions in detail very soon. But what this function will do is perform some sort of an action on each of our values. So Superman, Batman, Flash, etc. So in here, we're going to say function. It will need a name, but it will need some parameters. Now, there are up to three parameters that we can provide. The first one is required. Okay, it's necessary. The other two are optional. Let's see what they are. The first one is basically a reference to the value. So in here I'm just going to say value. In other words, this is a reference to either Superman, Batman, Flash, etc. The second parameter is called index. As you can probably guess, this refers to the index value of each of these. So Superman is zero, Batman is one, Flash is two, and so on. The index parameter is optional. And finally then, the third parameter is called array. And this is basically a reference to this entire array. Once again, array is optional. So what we're going to do then inside these curly braces of our function is very simply, we're just going to console.log and in here, we're going to use template literals to pull in the value parameter. Okay, so let's save, let's see what we get. Perfect, so in the console then, we've used for each to loop over each of these array elements or values and console logged each of these values. Now, technically for this example, we don't actually need to use template literals. So we can just get rid of these and just use the value as it is save and we get the exact same thing but we could also do something like the following so let's get rid of this use template literals and we can say the index of value is index let's save so what this does then is it prints out the following the index of superman is zero remember superman is a reference to value and this index number here is a reference to this index parameter if we were to print out the array, so let's use array. Okay, in VS Code, this actually lights up because we're using it. We're going to press save. And what this will do, will print out our entire array according to the number of values inside of our array. So we have nine values, and so it prints out our array nine times. So that's all about the for each method. The next one we're going to learn about is called map. Let's get rid of this and say map. So the map method is similar to for each. However, we can use map to return a different copy of the original array. So the map method iterates over our values and again, performs some sort of an action. The difference though is we can then store all these new values inside of a new array without affecting the original array. So for example, we can do things such as take our values and change each one to uppercase. We could have a list of numbers. Let's say we have an array with numbers one, two, three. We can then use the map method to double each of those numbers and store that into a new array. For our example, we're going to take each of these values and set them to uppercase. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to create our function. So we're going to say function, and let's call this uppercase. And the parameter we're going to use is going to be value again. And inside here, we're going to return value, and then we're going to use our string method called to uppercase. Okay, we learned about string methods in a previous lesson. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new variable. So I'm going to say let, and let's just call this supers cap because these are going to be our superheroes but they'll be capitalized and we're going to assign this to our array supers this is where we're going to use the map method now supers dot map and in parentheses we're going to supply this with a function so the name of this function is called uppercase for the previous example for for each we used what's known as a anonymous function a function that doesn't have a name so in here we're saying our function is called uppercase so we're going to paste this in okay and then down here we're going to console log our new array. Brilliant, so in here then we have a new array called supers cap where each of our array values are now 
capitalized. And just to show you that original array of supers is still intact. So if we say console.log supers, here you can see the original array remains intact. So once again, with the map method, what we're doing is we're mapping our values to a new value. So Superman here becomes Superman in all caps. Let's very quickly look at a numbers example as well for the map method. So let's get rid of this and I'm going to say let numbers be assigned the value of, we'll just say one, two, three. Okay, our function is going to be called double. Once again, we're going to take that value. Now, you don't need to call this value. You can call this anything you want. Let's just call it X. And inside here, we're going to say return because we want to double our numbers. We're going to say X multiplied by two. And down here, let's just get rid of all this. We're going to say let, call it double. We assign the value of our original array called numbers dot map. And inside here, the function is going to be this function called double. In fact, here we might have a clash because of the uh, names here. So let's just call this double n. And down here, I'm going to console.log double n. Let's save. And here you can see we've mapped our original array values to these new values, which are all doubles. So now instead of one, two, three, we get two, four, and six. So as you can see, then we can use the map method to take our array values and then map those values to new values inside of a new array. Once again, without affecting or changing the original array. The third array iterator method is called filter. So for this, we will be using a numbers array. So let's just comment this out for now. I might use this later on. Inside here, let's just go ahead and supply some new numbers. Just paste these in. Okay, let's get rid of all these. The filter method, as the name suggests, is used to filter our array. So it takes each value inside of our array and then applies a conditional statement to it. If it's true, the value gets added to a new array. But if the condition is false, then it does not. So here, let's create a new variable called even numbers. So let even numbers, and you can probably guess what we're doing here. We're gonna try and filter this array and pull out all the even numbers. So we can say even numbers is assigned the value of our original array, which is numbers dot filter. And once again, inside here, we need to supply a function. So let's put our parameters in. So we're gonna say value index and array. And then we're gonna say return value, where value modulus two is equal to zero. In other words, only return the values that when you divide them by two, their modulus or their remainder is equal to zero. In other words, there's no remainder. And if there's no remainder, it means it's an even number. So for example, two divided by two is one with zero left over. And so it's an even number. So down here then, all that's left is to simply console.log our variable. So it's called even numbers. And now even numbers is an array containing all the even numbers from our original array. So we get 2, 50, 12, and so on. So that's the filter method. The next one we're going to look at is called reduce. This method will run a function on each value inside the array to reduce the array down to a single value. So the reduce method can be used on strings and other data types as well, but it's most frequently used on numbers. Now the reduce method, unlike the previous methods, can actually take up to four parameters. We'll see what that extra parameter is in just a second. Although usually only the first two are used. Let's take a look at a common example where we take an array of numbers and add them all up to reduce it down to a single number. So here then we're going to create another function. We're going to say function, let's call this add. So in terms of the parameters for this function, the first one is that new one we mentioned, and this is often called accumulator or total. So let's just go ahead and say total, and we'll come back to this in just a second. And then after this, we've got our three usual suspects of value, index, and array. So what is this total parameter here? Well, because we're using the reduce method, we need a way on each iteration to store the current value. So in here, we're going to say return total plus value. And then down here, we're going to say let sum be assigned the value of, this is where we're going to use the method. So we can say numbers dot reduce. And inside here in the parentheses, we're going to supply that function name. So our function is called add. Finally, let's console.log sum. Perfect, so the value that we get back in the console is 503. And this is the sum of all of our array numbers. So once again, using the reduce method, we can take our array values, which are usually going to be numbers if we're using reduce, and we can reduce those values right the way down to a single value. And of course, that's controlled here by whatever you return. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is called the sum method. So let's go to all this, and let's just change this to 11. So what does the sum method do? 
Well, the sum method iterates over our array to check if a given condition is true for at least one of the values. If it is, it returns true, but if no value passes the test, then it returns false. So let's see how it works. So we're going to create a simple function that's going to check to see if this array contains at least one value that is above 10. And if that's true, it will return the Boolean value of true, but if it's false, then it will return false. So here then we're going to create a new variable called let higher than 10. And we're going to assign this to numbers dot sum. And once again, inside here then we need a function. So we're going to say function, this will be an anonymous function, which doesn't need a name. And the only parameter we're going to use here is value. And inside a function, we're going to say return value, which once again is a reference to each of these values more than 10. So we're looping over this array. So each of these numbers, and this here is the test. So we're checking to see if one is more than 10, if two is more than 10 and so on. So down here, let's go ahead and console.log our new variable. So higher than 10, let's save. And of course the console returns true. And that's because this final number here is 11. Remember the sum method only needs one of our values to pass the test in order to return true. So if we change this to, for example, nine, then the console will return false because none of our values have passed this test. Okay, so that's the sum method. The next one we're going to learn about is called every. And as you can probably guess, the every method is similar to the sum method. However, now every value needs to meet that condition. Then and only then will it return true. But if every value doesn't meet that condition, then it will return false. So let's go ahead and change this back to 11. Let's create a new variable. This is going to be called let all higher than 10. And we're going to be doing the same thing here, but this time we'll be using the every method. So we're going to say numbers dot every supply our function. Okay, so same as before. And then down here, we're going to console.log our variable name. So console.log all higher than 10. Let's save. And of course, the console returns false because all of these values are not higher than 10. Only one of them is. And if we just change these, let's make this 19, 20, 30, and keep that to 11. Let's save. And now we get true. So that's the every method. Once again, similar to sum, but this time we're checking to see if all of our values pass the test. Okay, two more to go. The next one we're going to look at is called find. So let's get rid of all this. And for this, we're going to be bringing back our original array of supers. So what does the find method do? The find method iterates over our array to find a certain value. If the array contains the value, then it returns that value. But if it doesn't, then it returns undefined. So let's see how it works. So here I'm going to say let find super be assigned the value of our array name, which is supers dot find. Let's create our function. Once again, this will only take our value parameter. And inside here, we're going to say return value is equal to who should we pick? Let's go for let's go for Thor. So in other words, what we're doing here is we're checking to see if our supers array contains this value of Thor. If it does, it will return the value, but if it doesn't, it will return undefined. So let's console.log find super. Let's save. And sure enough, in the console, we get Thor. Let's see what happens if we use a super that doesn't exist in our array. So let's change this to green lantern. Let's save, and we get undefined. So once again, the find method is used to find a certain value. And finally, the last iterator method we're going to look at is called find index. So this works in pretty much the same way as find, except instead of returning the value, it's going to return the index position of the value. So let's just change this to find index. And let's go for Batman this time. Paste this in, let's save. And what's returned to us is the index value of Batman. Remember Superman is zero, Batman is one. If we try searching for a value that is not contained inside our array, then it will simply return minus one. So once again, let's say green lantern and let's save. And sure enough, we get minus one. And with that guys, we've gone through all the array iterator methods. Let's go ahead and summarize. So we can use array iterator methods to loop over our values and perform some sort of an action on each of those values. We can use the map method, which will take each of our values and map them to new values without destroying or changing the original array. We can use reduce to reduce our values down to a single value. And as we just saw, we can use find and find index to identify whether our array contains a specific value. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at your tasks for this lesson. 
So we've got three tasks for this lesson, and as you can see, we've got an array of fruits on the screen as well. For task number one, I want you to loop through that array using the for each method and then alert each item including the index number. For example, zero hyphen apple, one hyphen orange, etc. For task two, create a new array using the relevant iterator method that takes the fruits and sets them all to uppercase. Okay, so have a think about what method we can use there. And then finally for task number three, I want you to use the right iterator method to check to see if each fruit contains more than three letters. And finally, console.log the boolean result. Once again, if you're not too sure what method to use, then simply go back and have a look at the different methods that we covered. Okay, so as always, try these out and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task one, we need to use the for each method to alert each of these values with their index numbers. So here we need to say fruits, which is the name of our array, dot for each, and then we need to supply a function inside here. So we're going to say a function, and here we need the value and the index. Remember, you don't need to use the words value and index, so we can just say fruit, which is a reference to the value. The reason we know this is value, because it's the first parameter. The second parameter is index, we can just say hi. Okay, and in here we're going to alert, use template literals to say index hyphen value. Let's go ahead and save. So we get zero apple, one orange, and two banana. Okay, so that's task one. Let's go ahead and just comment this out. For task number two, we need to create a new array using the relevant iterator method that will take our fruits and set them all to uppercase. So well done if you got this right. The one that we're looking for is the map method. Remember, we're mapping our values to new values. So here we're going to say let fruits cap be assigned the value of our array name, which is fruits dot map. And so here we're going to say function, just give ourselves some space. We'll go for value, index, and array. Just to show you again, you can use your own parameter names here. And what we're going to return is value dot to uppercase. Okay, so let's go ahead and console.log fruits cap. Let's save. And what we get in the console is our values, but this time they're all capitalized. Okay, and finally then for task number three, we need to use the right iterator method to check to see if each fruit contains more than three letters and then console log the result. So since we're checking to see if each fruit contains more than three letters, what we need of course is the every method. So here we're going to say let fruits and we'll say fruits three. We assign the value of fruits dot every and inside here we're going to say function we will take the value parameter and we're simply going to return our condition. So here then we need to check to see if each value has a length of more than three. So value.length, check to see if value.length is more than three. Let's go ahead and console.log fruits three. Let's save. And the console returns true because each of our values does contain more than three letters. So well done completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to be learning all about a different type of array called sets. And as you'll see, we can use a set instead of an array given certain circumstances. So guys, as always, be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like and subscribe down below. And I'll see you on the next one.